episode 19 episode of the Gamers Down Under podcast. I'm Laman and Steve, and we have a guest tonight. Yes, I believe I'm back again. Yes, welcome back, Pierce. Thank you very much. It's great to be here again. All right, back to you, Mo. <laughs> <laughs> well, that wasn't awkward at all. <laughs> hey. Hey. All right, so we'll start off the episode like we normally do, so... What have we been doing gaming? Don't start all at once now. Well, who do you want to hear from? Me? Well, let's get me over and done with, because my chat probably won't be the quickest. Uh, no, it will be the quickest this week. Sorry, I apologise. I, hmm, how would I explain it? i done zero tenths of beep all this week in gaming. i done between, oh, maybe ten hours for World of Warcraft. Which might sound a bit... I see you mouthing off at me, Michael. I've done two hours today. Remember, we're talking about a week. Oh, okay. Sorry, I was getting confused. I'm like, mate, your, your 10 hours was only two. But anyway, okay, cool. That was two hours today. So oh. I have... Uh, yeah, probably... Well, let's face it. The two weeks before that, I averaged 25, 30 hours. So to go down to 10, yeah, it felt like I'd done no gaming. But to... Others, they're probably like, oh, that's actually a fair bit of gaming. <laughs> well, Don't actually, I've done probably 10 hours into World of Warcraft, and I reckon I got to, I'm about, oh, I'd have to, beep, that's the pace no, 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 no. Oh, no, oh. I'm just checking me save state. <laughs> I'm just the save state. <laughs> <laughs> now, I reckon I'm about four hours into Borderlands 3. Um, I won't even think about trying to rant about Borderlands 3 tonight because obviously our special guest is far better than me at Borderlands. <laughs> Thanks for that, Steve. Yep, okay. Uh, and that's so Pierce, what have you been doing? <laughs> um, no Man's Sky and Borderlands 3. I'm... Oh, hang on, I'm shaking. He yeah. said the, the game of the year. Uh, yeah, you mean the game 3. of like two years ago? Yeah, three, <laughs> three years ago. Yeah. Uh, I I fixed it now. I never played it then. Yeah, I mean, I played it at release. It was it was fun at release. Like, but the thing was, I'd never watched any of the like the videos or anything. I didn't watch any of the like the spoilers or release things. Yeah. Yeah, that's so... what I think we talked about that last time you were on. Have you been on twice or once? Twice, once. I think. No, once is it? Okay, well, I think we talked to you about it the first time. I got it. I think so. I got it on first release, but I watched, like, all the hype and all the build-up to it. And they, and at that point, I was very addicted to sandbox games. Like, I was I was playing Rust and Daisy and all... Minecraft. No. no. <laughs> Don't say that. But, hey. oh, <laughs> hang on. Hang on, hang Rust. on. I've actually bought a game you'll never believe. And I'll show it to the screen so you can see. Yes, Dra- Dragon yeah, Dragon Quest. I love that game. Well, like, is that is a Minecraft game, and I hate Minecraft. So I don't know why. I saw it, and it's, I reckon it was a day one edition that got me to buy it. And is I'm that like, one, oh, one or two? One. Oh, I, I currently play two. the second one on Switch. Yeah. Yeah. And oh, it's... it's the part two, really? I got jibbed. <gasps> yeah. Oh, I'm still dead. Yeah. yeah. It's <laughs> number two. <laughs> Number two got released like oh, a month ago or something. Yeah, and I it, mean it's it's been out in Japan and stuff for a while because yes. we don't get their stuff <laughs> straight away, especially <laughs> drag, especially Dragon Quest. Yeah, yeah. But number two apparently oh, see, has a I lot more RPG. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's really lot, fun. Yeah, RPG type um, roots to it apparently. Yeah, and I've been playing uh, heaps of Borderlands Three since it's come out. I think my current save game has thirty-seven hours. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Yeah. I'm, when did I'm... it come out? Last yep. Thursday. That's unreal. Yep. yep. Yeah. L- wow. l- less than a week ago and 37 hours. And I'm saying I've done pretty well doing 12. Yeah. Well, I've been putting a lot of hours into it. I, I just I want to experience it because I knew that this was coming up. So I was like, I'd give you guys some uh, some positives and negatives about it. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. I... Look... I wanted to get Michael to rant, actually, before you do, solely because... All right, okay, so my gaming week, is that what we want to do? I want to sure. I want to have you rant because Pierce is the guest and he's done hmm, 
well, you heard it, 30 plus hours into a game that I reckon I don't think it'll get game of the year, but maybe I I am. I am. How, how did you know? <laughs> I, I, I could see it. I, I could hear the clicking. <laughs> it's all about the podcast and I hear the, every noise. Oh, um, now you put me off. Like I, I don't think it'll get game of the year. It might get shooter of the year, maybe. It, uh, I, ha- I haven't read enough reviews to see what mainstream is really uh, going about it. And because Call of Duty Modern Warfare, like remaster is coming out, it's got some pretty tough competition, even in the shooter realm. You also forget that Doom Eternal comes out almost at the end of this year as well. And that's going to be a game of the year contender as well. True. True. Definitely. I bought the Dragon Quest, like I said before, Builders. I haven't played one second of that. I thought it'd be only style for Mr. VR to pick up another VR title. Now, remember how I said I don't want scary games as VR? Because I reckon I'm going to be too chicken. Yeah. I mm-hmm. bought De- Doom VR. Mate, monsters jumping out. Drinking a... F- <laughs> <laughs> Could you hear that? Oh, I thought I muted myself. Uh, okay, I didn't. I'm not on mute. <laughs> Okay. All right, so I'll start. I'll try and continue. So Doom VR, again, haven't played one second of that, so that's on the to-do list. And I don't know, Dragon Ball Z, I haven't had a good Dragon Ball Z game for a while. So I've got Dragon Ball Z Xenoverse. Yeah, number 15, one, is it? two. XV, yeah, 15? Yeah, yeah. I, no, I don't think they actually called it um, 15. Mm. There's a newer one than that, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it wasn't a new release. It was just one that I saw that I'm like, oh, yeah, you know what? I'll give Dragon Ball Z a go. I love the cartoons, so I thought, why not? Um, Have you seen the new Dragon Ball Z coming out? No, no, no. The the series you're talking? No, no, the new game. The re... Oh, Kakarot? Kakarot. Yeah, something like that. They're remaking it. Well, that's what made me think about getting a Dragon Ball Z game. I saw that and I thought, oh, yeah, I'll give it a go and see. Because apparently it is still the Dragon Ball Z timeline as well. Isn't yeah, Kakarot meant to be like a like an RPG, not like a yes. straight fighting game. Yeah, yes, yeah. The only thing that upset me is, like, we've we've seen it all before, like Dragon Ball Z. Let's face it, we've done it. But why not go back right from right to the start, like remaster Dragon Ball, bring back King Piccolo, all, all like. As a series, I didn't like Dragon Ball itself. Yeah, I, I watched it. And I'm like, eh. Dragon Ball Z was the best. And then GT, I never watched. And the other one after that, I didn't oh, watch. But Dragon Ball I, Z, and I remember f- like five episodes for them powering up for the Cell games. And like, seriously, that's a burnt into my mind. But it, like a really good show, a really good TV cartoon, sorry. Yeah, you watch, um, oh, what is it? Is it Kai? Dragon Ball Z Kai? They're, it's a lot faster paced. They don't have to build up for. Uh, it's about thirteen <laughs> episodes. <laughs> so, but no, so I'm gonna. Sp- I will try it this week um, to have a go at them and see how they go. But I know everyone knows. I, I posted some stuff on Facebook the other day regarding my favourite game at the moment, No Man's Sky. Now, if you look at those photos that I post on our Facebook page, they look. It looks unreal. It's actually a planet. It's just. Oh, it's amazing how much they've done for the game. And you say, like I said to you. Earlier today, we were discussing it, and I said, it's not a sandbox, because a sandbox has edges. This hasn't got an edge. I don't think anyone can go to every single planet. I don't know how long that would take, but like I've literally, in my one corner, I haven't even got anywhere near the centre of the universe. So, And today, this will be your Final Fantasy fifteen. I got a car. <laughs> and the good thing about this car... I can actually drive to the quests. Uh, oh, you, you're in shock. I know. Yeah, I know. You, you can actually get right to the quest. You don't have to park four miles away, run for three days, having a lovely conversation with three other guys. No, no, no. You just drive straight to your quest. You get out of the car, kill the creature, and then drive back. It's fantastic. So much time saving. And it's a bit cheaper than the, fl- the plane, but I don't actually need money because I've got so much money of it now. But a really good and game. How'd, how'd you come across that money? Oh, um, oh I, hours and hours of grinding. 
<laughs> well, I actually, <laughs> yes, I uh, came upon a base and they had a lot of, um, I don't even know what they are. Mo, something I don't know, something really, really expensive. Anyway, when you when you go there, I took all the items because I didn't bother taking just one or two. I just took everything, and I realized how much it was. It was a hundred million dollars, <laughs> and I saw the the refresh rate of this thing. It's every hour, so I've upgraded everything. <laughs> but I Is... then later found the guy that owned the base. He said, "Hey man, do you want to have this?" And like, I already felt bad that I took from him before, and he goes. Yeah, yeah, it refreshes every hour. I just come back and take it. I'm like, oh, okay. I didn't know what they were. Yes, I did. I'd already gone to the space station. I'd already sold the buggers. It was fantastic. I wonder, like, you've got $100 million. What's the economy like? Like, is it actually $100 million? Is that exponential amount of money? Oh, is massive, it... massive, 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 massive. Then how you come they can get so, so much in literally one hour? Like $100 million per hour. It was a lot of so it's sort of like a farming system he had set up. Yeah. Where it was, um, I'm I'm assuming it's some air farming thing they're doing and getting minerals out of the air because of the planet we're on, uh, because the environment in the planet has these minerals. Uh, yep. Modium, I think it's a modium. Anyway, whatever it is, and, and that's what it refreshes every hour. And I've got so many of these machines. Literally, it looks like two massive paddocks full of those machines. So it's probably and cost I, him a fortune. Oh, to it would have set co- that yeah, up. It, yeah, like when I spoke to him about it, I'm like, mate, this is unreal. Like, how long did this take? He goes, I've been playing for literally plus 500 hours. And I'm like, and here's me on my little 60 hours at the time. And I'm like, whoo, <laughs> I'm doing yeah. real good. And he tells me 500. I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> back, go back to the drawing board. But yeah, now some of the people's builds are amazing. Do you actually I'm reckon, just... like, I'm, I'm, I'm actually happy that No Man's Sky kept going. Like, I, I, as much as I I give it a pure mockery and everything like that, it, it's still good that the developer put the time and effort... Like, they just burnt me at the start because they turned around and said, oh, we don't care. We can do whatever we want, If even if we give you dragons. That's right. It's our game. And, like, they were a bit... Uh, Did I tell you you can get mounts? Mounts? Yeah, yeah, not like a dragon, but like creatures on the planet. Some of them are quite weird looking. Yeah, you can actually get them as a mount. Uh, yeah. There was a really weird one that I found, like on the planet that I live on. Uh, there's these like little gummy baby things. They're like an inch tall and they run around as if they're like huge. But the animations are all <laughs> off, and you can actually tame them and mount them and ride on these miniature like <laughs> things, and your your character like sits on them. And, like, sitting in the air. It's the funniest thing ever. I'll have to see if I can get a photo of it and post it on the Facebook page. Definitely, yeah, cool. definitely. No, because uh, I haven't... I, and mind you, I haven't done any mounts either. So, But I, I just know that that's coming. And there's a massive update happening in the next couple of days. I did see that, with, yeah. Uh, yeah, they're unlocking a couple more features. More for the multi site, uh, multiplayer Player? aspect. Yeah. Some more group um, missions and things like that, which I reckon is good because I actually did that on the weekend as well. I was actually doing group missions. Um, so, say for an example, if me and you are playing, we can be on opposite sides of the universe, but I can actually join your game and I'll actually go to your base or wherever yep. you are. Yeah. Um, and then we can go from there and do missions or come back to mine or whatever. It doesn't really matter. Um, yep. But yeah, no, fantastic game. So that's yeah, that's my gaming week. I wonder uh, well, if it'll I'll ever go to. very mainstream, like it, because it took three years to get to where it is. Like it, it's like I, 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 I appreciate what they've done by keep going and giving us the game that they did say they were going to give. But at what point, like, are they just literally now developers practicing and just doing like building their dev skills by just churning out code on this game and everything well, like that until number two? Well, I don't know, but Pierce, with the um, PC version, because you're playing on PC, right? Yes, I am. Yeah, so is there mods for the game? Yes, there are. They are, like, completely game-changing from what I've seen. Most of them are just, like, visual changes or stuff like that. Like, uh, okay. the one I currently run is 
because I run it over all three of my screens, the UI is really stretched. So I had to get a yeah. mod that sort of like pushes everything to the sides of the screen and unstretches it. Ah, uh, uh, okay. That's as far as I've delved into the No Man's Sky mods. Yeah, because I was actually looking on YouTube today and I was seeing that they actually mod it. And I'm like, that's the one thing about consoles. You can't really get those mods. Like yeah. there was all the oh. SimCity games and that that came out. There were so many mods on PC, but on the consoles are quite restricted. So um, the, the modding community just... Oh, I have to they tell go you, nuts. Ha- yeah. yeah. Like, have you seen Grand Theft Auto? five um <laughs> mo- mods that they've done it's like especially with the ultra realism um mod uh, it just literally looks like you're driving in the real world yeah no that's, it looks really ridiculous. good all right well that's about enough out of your voice that i wanted to put up with tonight so let's uh-huh. let our guest pierce have a chat shall we yeah so um mainly in well, i've been playing mainly borderlands 3 and um like, everyone knows there's a lot of, like, controversy surrounding yeah. it and the whole Epic Store thing and all those things. But yeah. w- once I got my hands on the game, it's like, it's a game that you can feel hasn't been affected by any of those things in its development. It, it feels as what? if it's... Yeah, we go on. Hey, whose phone was that? Not uh, well, I don't know. I think that was my roommate's. Oh, hey God. I thought it was Steve. I was You're so fine. happy. No, no, no. What's the um? What was the? Ah, uh, see, Michael might not understand about the Epic Store. Ah, uh, Epic Store controversy. Yeah, well, uh, Epic, okay. Yeah. Um. So the controversy behind the Epic Store was um. It was meant to. Well, people thought because all the previous Borderlands games had been on Steam that it was just going to be straight to Steam, like all the other Borderlands games were. But um. The Epic Game Store bought the rights for a six-month exclusive to the Epic Game Store. Uh, so okay. all the people are like up in arms, like talking about like how like Tencent like own the Epic Game Store and they're like they're spying with your information and all this uh, uh, normal stuff that people do whenever something new comes around. I remember ten, fifteen years ago, Steam came out and people were like, "What's this? Yeah. I put my CD key into this." program and what what it'll steal my information on my credit card and all that it's like it doesn't change anytime new technology comes out or new software comes out it's the same thing it's just worse now because you have all these people online that are i still don't uh, like their lives revolve around this kind of stuff like controversy i wear i wear my um i wear my tinfoil hat every night thank you very much there is nothing (laughs) wrong with a couple of conspiracy theories i mean Uh, uh, there's nothing (laughs) wrong with it but when it starts impacting the development of a game series that you love a lot then it becomes (laughs) yeah yeah but like borderlands 3 feels like a game where none of that outside influence affected the development it feels like it's it's a complete package which you rarely get these days i've played 35 40 hours of it and i i haven't i've i've come across one major bug in the entire 40 hours there that's it oh really which was, in, 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 in one of the bosses, he got stuck in the floor, and then I had to restart the checkpoint, and everything was fine perfectly after that. Yep, yep. <laughs> I have to say, day one release, I chuck it on. By the time the game installed off the disc, the day one patch was finished. It was only 280 megs. I haven't had that from a game for a very long time. Like, most games that I have bought recently on playstation 4 oh it's 10 10 gig uh day one download and all of a sudden i that's why i haven't even gone to pretty much any um midnight releases because all of a sudden you're getting this game at midnight you're getting home and you don't get to play it until oh what well with my internet 6 7 a.m yeah, well, uh, Borderlands, they, they attempted to do that. They, um, well, they attempted to remedy that by, they actually had a release in WA and South, uh, WA and uh, somewhere else where you could pick up the game at 7 p.m. the day before the release. Yep. So that you got time to preload it for the yep. release. But the problem yep. was, because of how our time zones fall, the game wasn't activated until 7 a.m. release day. Uh. So... <laughs> It was it was a matter of you get it like but you get it but then have to wait twelve hours instead of just like three or four because of how yeah. the time zones fell. 
But yeah. Uh... Could you still install it though as well, or not? Yes, you can. You can still preload and everything. You just oh, okay. couldn't play the game until seven a.m. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, as I was saying, it, it's a it's a very complete package, which is very rare these days. A lot of games, you'll like you'll do like some main quests, and then there might be a side quest here or there. But you go into Borderlands, it's like the first hour is here's this main quest, but here's this quest here, and here and here and here. And then I I just got sidetracked. I just kept going for the side quests because they were so funny. Like there's no, no spoilers in this, but there's literally one that's you are helping one of the resistances get their coffee supply back because they haven't had coffee in months. So you're like, going <laughs> and fetch all these coffee parts and like you, uh, oh. you end up delivering one of the commanders a coffee and they're like, oh my God. And then you get this, like all these ridiculous like weapons that like shoot like, ha- like hamburgers and stuff. And it's just great. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it's so tongue in cheek. It's, it's what, um, it's what the game what games lack these days is everything so serious, like military shooters, blah blah blah. I miss the days where I could I could go into a room, kill everything, and laugh like uh, uh, laugh maniacally. Like, yes, I, I I I miss those days where like uh, uh, you took everything with a grain of salt. It wasn't like had to yeah. be focused and stuff like that. But yeah, Borderlands does that extremely well. I like I've been a fan since the first game, and every game I played I've absolutely loved, including um. Tales from the Borderlands. Uh, that wasn't made by Gearbox, but the ugh, that that game was, was a treat to play. I, I don't know if okay. any of you two have played it. I I didn't play it actually. I'm not even gonna comment about Borderlands. I uh, <laughs> I'm actually very nervous to talk about Borderlands at the moment. <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's, that's all you're saying. Oh, look. Okay, so I think of like a, a shooter game. Okay, and I know when I was younger. Not much younger, but when Counter Strike first came out, <laughs> yeah, um, like playing, and it's real. You're looking at a real person. You're not looking at a cartoon. And the whole design of Borderlands, like I looked at the, I was actually going to buy the previous version too, this a couple of weeks ago. And I'm like, I looked at the art, and I had a look at the gameplay, and I looked at a couple of, not the reviews, but just gameplay. And I can't get my head around the cartoon aspect of the game. Yeah. It's a shooter. It needs to be. It needs to have more realism. So I, I, I don't know. Disagree. I was watching you. I, I was watching you stream. Well. Yeah, see, that's why I was nervous to say something. <laughs> no, it's, I, was, it's I, was good watching, <laughs> I was watching Steve stream the other night, and I'm just looking at going. Yeah, no, no, I, I don't want the game, and, and and that's it. And I haven't, mind you, I haven't played any Borderlands before. So maybe again with the nostalgia factor coming in, you've played all of them and you're like, oh, the next one, the story. Does the story actually continue from previous versions to this version? Yes. So it's, it's all the same storyline? Yes. The exact okay. same storyline. And is it the same characters then? Yes, the exact same characters. Like, give or take one or two throughout the entire story. It's been okay. very consistent. Like, there's characters from, like, the first game that you still see in in the third one. And it's been 10, 15 years, I think. Mm. Seven years since number two. And... Yeah, seven years since number two. And then before that, I think it was another five. Five, yeah. Yeah, I would, I'd guess five. So it's, I still don't understand what you actually like as a game. Like, <laughs> like, I don't. He says he doesn't like... He says he doesn't like realism on the RPGs because he can only play for five minutes. Then uh, he says he, no, he no, no, likes no. realism. I like realism. And I, I said, How? No, you said no, you didn't no. like Final Fantasy because no. you couldn't drive your car through a mountain to get to the quest. I can drive over the mountain, clearly. You can hop in your car and drive over a mountain? Yes. Lies. <laughs> uh, no the... man lies, bro. The thing that initially drew me to the art style of Borderlands was every single texture in the game is drawn by hand. So every texture that you see, an, an artist has sat down and just drawn it up. It's like mind-boggling to me. Like you see games of the scale, and you look at the textures, and you like you're like, oh yeah, it looks like a tree. And then you zoom in, and you can see the pen lines and all that like on the textures, and it's just ridiculous. Yeah. The amount of effort that's gone so into that art style. That. Yeah. See, I didn't actually know that about the the game. I just saw it as someone tried to draw on the toilet or something. I thought it was one of Steve's. The original artists. game was meant to be realistic, but yep. they they felt like 
with the direction it was going, it was it was meant to be like a zany and corny shooter. It wasn't meant to be a military shooter. Yeah. They felt like the way that they were going, it like conflicted. It was like this really serious tone with yeah. like this like really comedic like voice lines and stuff. Mm. But it got to the point where they did this art style and it's become absolutely amazing. No, I can't. Um, like, obviously, I, I'm i not going to say it's game of the year, but I, exactly what Pierce said, it feels fresh. It's not, like, if I want realism, I'll go and play Sniper Elite. I, I'll, or I'll just go and get a gun and go shooting myself. I'm listening. I am listening. <laughs> and I, I'm moving. <laughs> I'm running away. I'll go back to my uh, realism right there. Skyrim VR. Yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I just... Um... Uh, so what did you think about it, Steve? If you are, if you think that I'm so wrong. Well, I think that's R18+. plus. Yeah. I didn't think we had R-rated games. Yeah, we do. Ooh. Yeah, they made R-rated a couple of years ago, but our R is... It's like a soft R compared to a lot of other countries. Our R, our R board is still pathetic for actually an R rating. Don't get me started on the rating board. No, I... Well, if it was up to me with the game, I think I made the biggest mistake and I built the game up too much in my mind. I probably let the hype get to me too much and now it's not a 9 out of 10 or even probably an 8 out of 10. It's probably like a 7. But that is because I'm only 5, 6 hours in. And what once again, it's I don't have the time to play an RPG where I want the, the lore. Like, I want the, the storyline. And the hard part is, for me, I, I wasn't a... How would you say it? Like a dedicated fan for number one and two so to wait so many years in between the storyline i remember Steve handsome jack it. and stuff like that but really like they did do a remaster collection i'm pretty sure yes, not long not not long ago yeah. i i should have bought that i tr my, one of my biggest regrets is i didn't buy it i should have bought it put, put some hours into that to yeah. to to reignite the memory and then the nostalgia would be kicked in so if, for me i'm just literally playing B borderlands 3 i haven't got yeah. much nostalgia there so six hours in i haven't come across any if not many of the older style uh, like originals or anything like that um like today i got to turn it on for half an hour and then yesterday I played it for maybe 45 minutes. Like with World of Warcraft or Overwatch, the two games I've been playing for four weeks, that's probably why they're working so well for me because they are a game like World of Warcraft. I can log in, set fly to wherever, Ashenvale from Ogrimmar, and then I get a phone call and it's like, oh, off to work or i got to cook tea or i got to do whatever, and I log straight off. Like there's yeah. – it's not – a uh, a story dependent game it's got lore to it if you want to look into it blizzard has always been very good with their lore i really enjoy um reading starcraft and warcraft books but it's it is uh mmo rpg like i'm on discord yeah. every day just talking to mates and just grinding that way so it's a different aspect of what borderlands 3 is maybe I see because it's two player. I haven't played the two player. I'm I'm trying to convince the young fella to play, but I don't know whether he's old enough yet. Um, but it might be something like if I had a second person with me and we just said, "All right, every Tuesday, it's Borderlands Three Night," and you turn, yeah, yeah, and like, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. And then I think that that would be something where it's like, now nah, every Tuesday, Borderlands Three Night, you play for two hours. And then that until the next week, and then it's enough to keep you going. It's keep yeah. you keep you in it. You might never finish the game at this rate, like especially your hour thirty six. Like I haven't come across like what 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 games have we done? Jeez, even in the last six months, like um, oh, what World War Z, Days Gone, Rage Two, all yeah. of the like Rage Two storyline 
the main storyline, geez, I think I finished that in eight hours. Uh, yeah. Like, it, 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 Rage yeah. two, it didn't really encourage side quests, so I fell no. for the I fell for the trap of being like, damn, this is a nice game, and playing all of a sudden eight hours in, you're like, what the hell? I just finished yeah. the game, and then when I read up, on, <laughs> I read on forums, they're like, as soon as you get to the first town, don't do any more. Um, and because of that, the game was very lackluster for me. I probably would have yeah. given it like a, like a six out of ten. And then when I read up on forums, they were all like, "Do not finish the game without doing all the side quests, because that's yeah. where that's where the real meat is of Rage Two. Yeah, and I. I didn't know that. So all of a sudden I finished this game and I'm like, oh man, what was that? And Days Gone was very like tumultuous. Like, Did you end up finish Days Gone? No, it just, it wasn't enough for me to, to go back the next day. Like I, I put in maybe 20 hours, uh, but it was the, the apocalyptic world for me, just because it's apocalyptic, doesn't mean it has to be so dark. I just. I, I was going to say that. I was watching a lot of the streams and I was watching other people play it as well and it looked really dark. Like, I want to... I, I enjoy that sort of aspect. I really, especially with the story writing, I'm addicted to what would happen to the world if society or humans vanished. Like, there's TV shows like uh, 100... Stuff like that, Steven Spielberg's one where they go back in time with dinosaurs, all that kind of aspect for me, I absolutely love. But it's like, why is it going to be so dark? Why does that? Why does that? Uh, I call them all zombies, uh, whatever you want to call them, as per game. But why is that zombie only four foot away and he can't see me, and then all of a sudden jumps out and makes me put my pants? And uh, yeah, I don't know. It's a lot of games as of late haven't won me over. And I don't believe it's actually the games. I believe it's me. I, I reckon I'm just time poor and I'm just not dedicating. Probably the same as you, Michael, when you said, oh, Final Fantasy 15. No, nah, not for me. It is a game where you need to, sort of like No Man's Sky. If you, what I try to do these I days. I pushed through with that. I reckon yeah, that's why I'm, I'm yes. liking it. And I, and I say to myself, you know what? Every single game I'm going to buy for Gamers Down Under, do a review giveaway whatever i will put 10 hours minimum whether i like it or not i will do 10 hours because 10 hour mark for most games these days can give you a bit of a better idea of what type of game it's going to be unless it could just be the entire game or it's the entire game yes exactly and (laughs) uh, unless it's a jrpg and then all of a sudden you're scratched at the the scab of the game pretty much it's you need a (laughs) hundred you need a hundred hours for that you've Um, designed your character finally but like you're you're, you're saying 36 hours in how far do you reckon you are in the storyline pierce um judging on my friends who have already finished the story i'm about halfway to three quarters through the story yep yep. yes i've been doing every side quest along the way like I'm, i'm 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 the type of gamer that's a completionist i will Look at everything. I will take every quest. I'll complete every quest. I want to grind out that in-game loot. All I'm going to tell you is No Man's Sky, you'll never stop it. (laughs) Oh, no, it'll never end. (laughs) It's just mind-blowing. I think I spent the first 30 hours on the first planet before I even left it. Yep, yep, yep. So I'm up to 70 hours now on No Man's Sky. And that's in, what, Steve, was it two weeks? Yeah, two it's weeks. Two, maybe two and a bit weeks, yeah. So, 70 hours, that's a lot of hours of gameplay, and I'm still loving it. Hmm. Do you believe... Actually, I wanted to ask you, and it's more towards the game studio, game development side of things, do you believe, like, playing these type of games benefits you or hinders you pierce like does it give you ideas or does it lure you away from what you have in your mind um it depends on the type of game um personally i take things as more inspiration than gospel when it comes to coming up with ideas i'm not someone who will go i like that concept i want to make a game exactly like that yes 
or things yeah. like that, I'll go, I like that idea, but how could I have done that better? How could I improve yeah. on, on that mechanic, on that system? Yes. And that's, that's what I, I sort of, like, you look at the gaming world, especially at the moment, it was so heavy with the Battle Royale scene. It was all of, all of a sudden, every single game was Battle Royale. Uh, and it, w- it was like, I enjoyed Battle Royale. I actually, like, with World of Warcraft, I'm a PvPer. I'm always up against people. Like, Counter-Strike, I used to play. All these type of games was a search and destroy, free-for-all on Call of Duty. Like, I always enjoyed it, but all of a sudden, it's like, oh, there's a new game coming out, and it's like magicians and magic and all this kind of stuff. And then when I go to actually look at the game, it, it's a battle royale. And you're like, oh, that was the yeah. I, I think I I signed up for the uh, beta of that. It was beta. spell something. Spell spell break. I think spell break. That was the one. Yeah, it, it was a it was like a magical based battle royale. Yeah. And I was like, it could be good. And then they delayed it and delayed it and delayed it yeah. and delayed it. And I was like, I just can't be bothered anymore. No, I signed up for the beta as well because I was like, oh, I actually don't mind that concept that like for me they've taken the like the mechanic of a battle royale but they've put a whole new twist to it it's no longer just like Fortnite. you got to be like optimus prime and build the biggest high-rise tower you can possibly build and like you got to defend yourself with that kind of stuff and apex um apex legends was a different one and then they were battling and i just spell break was still a battle royale, but I was like, "Oh, maybe I'll give that a try." Uh, the yeah. Daunt- Dauntless got me away from the battle royale. All of a sudden, yeah. I was still I was still playing with friends, but it wasn't a battle royale. But it wasn't enough to keep me longer than yeah. ten minutes. Um, and yeah, then I I didn't touch it past like the third or fourth tier of armor. Yeah, yeah, and but it did get not grindy. It was just a bit heavy, and it felt like within the first hour. I had achieved what that game offered. It yeah. was just it was just going to offer different different uh, variations of the same same. Yeah. Same, same, yeah. Different. Yes, exactly. See, I only played half an hour of that game, so I think I killed that first monster, went to the town, didn't know what to do next. So I'm like yeah. All right, moving on. Yeah, and that was that was one where I it was it wasn't too heavy with the pay to win but it did have a lot of pay-to-play concepts and ideas to it, and that's why I couldn't convince a lot of my friends to come over on board. And it felt like a game where if you pay, if you played with your mates every night and you were on Discord yeah. and everything like that, then it would be okay. But on your own, trying to join groups, yeah. So I, I don't know. I, I feel as if, like, actually going back on that, kingdom come deliverance they said a very good yeah well yeah, yeah. While, while the game might not have ended up being what i expected or wanted to the quality or maybe it was just it was physically too law heavy like it was their physics engine or whatever you want to call it was just so full on i was just like damn, I literally have to learn how to become a sword master to play this game. And it was, yeah. it, was too, it was too much for me. But the developers in that game, when they first started, it was a good idea, not an idea, like a look at something. They said, because at that point it was very zombies. There was a little bit of dinosaurs, but that was when, um, oh, what was that TV show that everyone was loving with the zombies? think you've mentioned it michael walking uh, Walk dead yes so how do you not know the name of that oh, i forgot it it's and because I, it I didn't do, leave I, a good I, impression it just it just yeah it sort, of, it sort of just disappeared from existence it did didn't it and that's what everyone oh, might actually that's yeah no, that's true the and end of the final they were like hi oh, there was like season one was like everyone's like oh my god it's amazing season two it was like everyone's amazing and season three they're like eh. season four's like <laughs> eh. and then season five and it just vanishes away it gets like thanos clicked I away from existence season... and no one cares yeah anymore. that's it <laughs> I, think, yeah. I think my mate I think said they season the zombie thing though yeah season four it, it went like... back up again and then it crashed again yeah season five i stopped um but i think they did overkill the whole zombie genre 
Yes, yeah, I know. It was, was... Just every, it was getting so saturated. Like, you had Walking Dead, World Wars, uh, World War Z came out. You also had, oh, there was another, a sci-fi channel um, zombie one as well, Z Nation. Now, that was actually quite funny because that was like a, yeah. a comedy zombie show. But it was I think the market was too saturated with the whole zombie genre to sustain yeah. it. Like, and, yeah. that was, and that was what the Kingdom Come Deliverance people actually said. They said, you have to look... Like, especially when you're trying to do a triple A rated type game with a smaller indie studio, you have to look at what you think will be in in five years' time. Because if you're, if you're sitting here right now in 2019 and you say, like, let's just say dinosaurs, because Jurassic World is coming out, dinosaurs are the top tier right now. There's no use trying to start a dinosaur game now, because by the time you finish that game, dinosaurs are finished they're not going to be like everything goes in waves and it maybe by five years time six years time dinosaurs are back and that so that was what they turned around and said because they were taking some advice from their fan base but that was their answer because their fan base were like oh why don't you do this why don't you do that and they said well we'll we'll take sort of like micro evolutions or little suggestions we've already decided what sort of core game we want and we won't sell out on that because this is what we want and this is what will hold our heads up high with what we produce see i like that with um developers and that that are doing these gaming consoles like evercade i was saying to you the other week as well they're asking the, their customer base what do we want in games or like, do you want a game cartridge with just one game on, or do you want 20 games on it, or 10? And, and like, they're getting, they're doing polls and that all the time. And there's so many different polls that they're doing. I reckon that's fantastic. The because thing is, then they learn from us what we want. The problem is, gamers don't know what they want. Not, uh, not these days. Like, I think we actually broached on it last time. Everyone is just sour. Like, no one is happy with what they're given. They just, they would much rather complain about one bug than a flawless game. The problem with the industry as well is as soon as something like negative sparks, it's all follow the leader. Yes. This person found this thing out about this developer, and now everyone's piggybacking on that, calling them like like assholes or like degenerates or like yep. they should be fired. They shouldn't be able to run companies because of this one thing that they've done and and then after that all these people go digging for more information on in their history and it just piles on and piles on it's it it's something that I, I feel like it's stopping a lot of new developers from putting themselves out there because if anything ever happens like that it's like you the, the internet's going to dig up your past and they're going to barrage you with it no matter how good or bad your past could have been yeah and that's like look at James Gunn prime example for Guardians of the Galaxy. Like, he was peeking out, and all of a sudden someone found on his Twitter feed or whatever from six, seven years, ten years or something prior, a, 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 it was a bad taste joke, but he was a comic at that point, and he was making distasteful jokes. Whether you want to call it politically incorrect, whatever you want to say, it was... A joke and in his mind especially in the comic world like look at the eddie murphy's and the Chappelle and everyone like that imagine if we said oh you're not allowed to say that some of our greatest comedians movie writers like they yeah. wouldn't ex- they wouldn't exist and all of a sudden james gunn got got sacked by disney because of uh, and i i'm not even going to bring up the political side but the left wing side of things were running him through the mud and that hurts me because i'm probably very left wing myself but it's like just leave him alone like why it yeah i just people need to look at games and everything for what they are yeah the problem these days is people are too sensitive games are meant to be an escape from reality you should Politic, in my personal opinion, politics have no place in video games unless the video games inherently are about politics. Yes. I yep. play video I games lo- to get away from reality, not to be stuck back inside of it. But look, I look- would, no, 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 just saying politics and gaming, I would love a Babylon 5 game. <laughs> oh, 
like talking to other governments, space station. Come on, Pierce, I need it. When, when can we have it released? It's eight, it's eight thirty now. So what? By ten thirty, I'll be with done. I want it exactly like. Actually, I should just speak to the creators of um, No Man's Sky. They could implement that about five oh. years time. That's okay. I'll wait. I'll still be. I'll probably be on the fourth or fifth planet by then. I'll not be nowhere near the middle of the universe. And I, yeah. I just, yeah, I look. Look at some of the stuff that we have done over gaming. Do you remember that one mission in Modern Warfare where you walked into the airport? Oh, uh, no Russian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like literally, it was you. I'm, I'm not laughing. It's not funny. It's bad. <laughs> there, there was so much controversy around that. <laughs> okay, so I don't know it. So just keep telling me. Oh, you don't know. know. Oh, you walk oh. into an, you walk into an airport with four of your mates. You all have just pretty much Gatling guns under your arm, and you just mow through the whole entire airport. Just, just like every civilian. single civilian. You just mow, mow through them. And civilian, I was, not even an army person. No, no, civilian. Banned ban ban in Australia. There was no, it. it wasn't though. That's the thing. Nah. There was so much controversy around that. But because I, I, I feel like it's also based on what was happening at that point in time, because it was at the same time as like, um, as like terrorism was a huge thing. Yeah. Like it was all over the news. I wouldn't I, say it was, it was acceptable, but it was. It was more accepted it was, because it could become a reality. So they wanted yeah, to talk about it. It was, uh, what do they call it? Um, social commentary. It was like a social commentary at that point yeah. where like it could happen. It's more like, I mean, it, it more than likely did happen somewhere in the world at some point in time. But at that point, video games were becoming so mature that it's, it was a big controversy, but it wasn't a controversy to the point of where it was like boycott this game like, like it is these days. It was a controversy and then people played it and then people got over it. It wasn't, the game's been released now, let's continue shit-talking this developer now that this game's out, even though we did it before it was released because of a yeah. couple of decisions they made. It was, oh, this thing's going to be in the game. Oh, it's terrible, it's horrific. Mm. And then nobody talked about it again after the game was released. See, that surprises me. And then that, you mentioned one bit about, ma one little thing with marijuana as a as a healing device, so then it's instantly banned. But no, 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 you and four mates can go to an airport and shoot up civilians... In a video this game. This is exactly, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah of course, in a video game. Yeah. But it's exactly <laughs> like Grand Theft Auto 5. You can yeah. gamble. You can put your money into the Grand Theft Auto system and get converted to currency and go to the casino and gamble. You can do that, but you can't have marijuana. Oh, like, th uh, uh, <sighs> did you hear about um, the casino and GTA is banned in certain countries that they didn't get a gambling license for? Because in certain countries, you have to have a license for yes, gambling yep. in video games. So in yep, a lot of yep. countries, it was banned. Yeah, but I not Australia. I was surprised it wasn't banned in Australia. Yeah, I was surprised <laughs> it wasn't banned in Australia. No, no. Everyone was Gambling's like, oh, good, guys. Don't worry about it. Gambling, and... drinking, that's just Australian culture. That's it, that's it. <laughs> but that's we... we... got to train them young. <laughs> we, Get me we a VB all... from the fridge. <laughs> Oh, VB, yeah. <laughs> we, all, we all laugh about, like, our certain rules and regulations and all the board and everything, but then Overwatch turned around and actively said Tracer was gay. Boom. Yeah. I instant ban in Russia. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because uh, homosexuality is still illegal over there. You're not allowed public signs of affection or anything like that. You get caught... Uh, with that in public, boom, you are done. Uh, uh, over yeah. there, there's no if, buts, or maybe. So uh, it's like we are talking about shooting up an airport, and it's okay, but if you're gay, oh, that's it, you're off to jail. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's yeah, like you know, just go directly to jail. That's yeah, so it's, sad. It's, <laughs> it's so it's, sad. It's, 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 you know what I mean? Like, it depends on the country's, I don't know, standpoint on what their morals are still built on. There are certain countries still that where their morals are so strengthened by biblical beliefs that it's this is higher than this. Like your yeah. their moral beliefs will be because of this. And like Australia it seems as if we are only one generation away from kicking out a lot of people who are making decisions that affect us. Like the 
fair work commission and all this kind of stuff is a previous generation who don't completely understand what is going on. Like if you ask my parents, kids should not have iPads, turn off the idiot box, blah, blah, blah. And it's technology, technology, technology. And then they go and hop in their brand new vehicles and turn the key and off they drive and they'll use microwaves and kettles. They use all technology as long as it suits them. Uh, yeah. but, they, but then there's technology that they don't understand. No, no, that's terrible. That's the devil. And yeah. you know what I mean? You know that's what I mean? the devil. I love it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that, was, that was straight up and down. My, my grandparents, it was like, I'd, I'd turn up to their place with like a Game Boy and they'd be like, turn that off. It's like, it's the devil. Yeah. The yeah. devil in and a that... box. Come spend time with the family. Otherwise you're going to like rot your brain, blah, blah, blah. Like... There's nothing wrong with me. I didn't rot my brain. Yeah, you're very good for a wall. <laughs> All I can say is I'm committed and I get things done. Yeah. But no, so, okay, so, so Borderlands, yay or nay, Steve? I, lo- I love your um, Swedish answers. I say yay. Swiss- sorry, Switzerland. 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 Yeah. I, I say yay. For if, and this is the detail that I gave out on the review the other day, if I walked into EB Games and I bought the steel hard copy for a hundred and ten dollars, then I'd be upset. I'd I'd be damn hundred and ten dollars. I probably could have gotten a game that came out only a couple of months ago or day one release. But if they were all sold, I could have got a game that came out like Dragon Quest Builders Two, uh, which is an RPG like builder game, and you can get it for fifty dollars. Like I can't say many games on Switch because they've they never lose their value. They're always. I don't understand that. I really can't understand why the Nintendo doesn't it, lose value. Nintendo it's just like a, a Sony thing as well, because Sony. Nin- Nintendo never do. Doesn't... No, Nintendo never give very good rebates as such back to the the purchasee, and so the EB Games can't buy them for a set value of like they do with Sony and stuff like that. But yeah, I just like hundred and ten dollars. No, definitely not. But day one release, I got I got it literally. I don't want to say what time because I was supposed to be at work that day. So I will <laughs> say... I, <laughs> I, my we'll knock-off check the time... Click button, click button yeah, the next, oh, my knock-off time the was 3.30 p.m. So I got there at 3.33 in celebration of Borderlands 3, it was all threes. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, day day one release. I even got me Borderlands um, mask, $60. For 60 bucks, done. I, I Even six hours in, I'd buy it again. Absolutely, guaranteed. I No spots or maybes. Because now it's a brand new game. New game comes out this week or next week. Like, say, Zelda. Link's Awakening finally comes out. I can take it in. I can trade it in. I'm a level four. I get good trade in. Boom, done. Normally, you take them two games in and you get the brand new game for $19 or something like that. They do them specials at new games. I'm not a big trade-in kind of guy. I keep a lot of my games. But yep. uh, if I was in that sort of market to do that, I, then, yeah, I'll, off I go. And all of a sudden, it, it keeps uh, the gaming rotating, I guess. But, yeah, um, yeah a, a yay for me. All right. right. Piers? It's a yay from me as well. Despite all the controversy for the game, we still got the product that was advertised, and that's rare these days. So, is there loot boxes in there, just before I finish? No, there is absolutely no virtual currency. No, I haven't None seen... None at all. No, I haven't seen there is, there is there any there. plans for them to release it in future updates? Um, no, they they said that there is never going to be loot boxes, there's never going to be premium currency in Borderlands 3. All you have to pay for is the story DLCs that will come. And even oh, in yeah, between so those... That's it, good. And in between those, they're releasing free new maps, free new bosses, free new weapons, they're all these free updates in between all the DLC. Wow. So, yeah, it you, was... Uh, you yeah, did I'll, not mute at all. <laughs> no, I was I was uh, actually talking to one of my friends about, like, we were we, we were trying to rack our brains for the the companies that just, like, like that, that don't do that anymore. Like, there, there are very few companies that what you see is what you get. 
Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I have to give it up to Gearbox, truthfully. I Like 2K, whatever you want to call them, like the yeah. developer. I, yeah, I definitely think they have stuck to their guns. Like, and that, and that, right, like going back on what we were talking about before, like just because Borderlands 3 is not on Steam doesn't mean it's a bad game. It, yeah, it's exactly. exactly the same game whether you download it off Internet Explorer, Steam, epic store what's um the other one i use every now and then you play or whatever play, it is good old like, games all there's so many different yeah. launches like yeah. I, I i have all them installed because like every launcher has their own appeals sure like epic games launcher doesn't have chat and it doesn't have all this stuff but if it has the game that i want to play on it and it's exclusive for a certain amount of time i like the game i support the developers i'm gonna buy the game it could it could be on Saturn for all I care. I'd play it from yeah. Saturn. Like it's not going to change how or how the game's going to come out. Like no. this was a market. What about decision. Stadia? Oh, See, well, that's a whole St- different kettle of fish. Stadia's interesting because they say it's <laughs> like zero latency, <laughs> but somehow right. I don't believe it. I don't know. It, it'll it, it'll be more of like a like uh, you show me it working well and I'll be yes. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be sold. I'll do it. But Square Enix tried. Yeah, I'll see it and then believe it. Yeah, Square Enix tried exactly the same concept many years ago. They actually opened up and they called the branch Avalanche, um, and they like it was a play on words with Final Fantasy VII, um, because their server name was, oh. Damn, I can't believe I've forgotten because I was obsessed with it because what they were doing was they were setting up their supercomputers in their, uh, say, Tokyo branch, wherever their branch was. These computers were worth tens of thousands of dollars. Like one one supercomputer was worth $30,000 and they built the game absolutely perfectly to for that computer. They didn't have to recode for anything other than that computer and they started to shinra shinra was actually the name of um the studio and avalanche and all that and then they had it all and then they shut it down because they realized that they in japan they've had nbn for oh 10 years 15 years they've had they've had fiber because it's a pretty small country it can fit what into queensland five times so for them fiber is not out of the ordinary it's uh, an easy uh, commodity australia on the other hand and most of the rest of the world at that point they didn't even think about having it uh, anywhere near to their level so they will they were like wow we're pouring in millions of yen into this concept that will literally only be able to be used in Japan. And so they shut it down. They said they'd love to go back to that concept and that idea, but yeah. in the fu- in the future. And it is it is so... It's Stadia, uh, Stadia's business model, if you've ever seen it. It's like yeah. a street, streaming system, like all that kind of stuff. And it's like, yeah... I don't know. I'd be very surprised. And it it does work a lot better these days with Netflix and Stan and Google yeah. Box and all that kind of stuff. I understand the internet is there, but whether the games are there and whether, like, I, I struggle. I'm I'm only, I'm only an hour north of a major city in Queensland, Australia, and I struggle. You're yeah. ten minutes. You're ten minutes further than me, and you've got perfect NBN. Yeah, well, I, I was just looking. Uh, Japan has had fiber optic cabling since 2001. Mm-hmm. They've had fiber. Yep, there you go. So, well, I remember I, I worked, and this is going back many years, I worked for Foxtel. Australia was so far behind the technology bandwagon, the only place, because when we updated from analog to digital Foxtel, the only place that would buy our analog was New Zealand. Not even Africa would buy it. Africa had already gone to di- di- they were going to digital the same time. Oh as yeah, like, uh, 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 when it when it comes to Australia and technology, we're basically a third world country. Yep, undoubtedly, and that's and that's been our biggest problem is for so many years these politics and politicians etc have all said, oh 
you don't need internet that can download fast than one megabyte. And then all of a sudden, oh, you don't need internet fast than 10. And then all of a sudden, Mr. Internet, old Turnbull, who owned NBN Co., borrowed his money from Mr. Packer, said, oh, you don't need fast than 25 meg a second. I, I don't yeah. even, I don't even get that. Uh, yeah, it's just the rollout of technology in Australia has been absolutely poor. No, And don't get me wrong, every single party is exactly the same, whether it's left, right, middle, up, down, whatever. They, go to the different, they all go to the same trough and they all they enjoy all, it and they go away. Yes, they, no yeah. matter what. Like, one thing is promising, though, with the new technology coming to Australia is 5G. Yeah. When that eventually rolls out, that, I reckon, will be the lifesaver of our but, technology issues at the moment. But 4G was supposed to be the lifesaver. Do you not remember when it got rolled out? And then 4GX was the next lifesaver. Like, and they never rolled them out properly. I had 4GX in Gladstone, which is a rural town. We, had, we didn't even have Target. We had Target Australia, or tar- no, sorry, tar- Target Country, it was called. Tar- yes, Country, yes, 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 yes. So it wasn't even a proper Target, and yet yeah. we had 4GX. So, uh, yeah, it was, oh, uh, yeah, they just, I don't know how they decide on where and what they're going to do with some of our technology. Like it's, And you look in a lot of other overseas countries, like the UK, they recognise, and this is going back when I was working for Foxtel, uh, in Australia, we were still arguing that coax will be just as good. And coax is, don't get me wrong. Uh, with cable, internet, cable, TV, we can get 100 megasecond out of our good coax. The uh, problem is coax has bad breakdown, and we need to replace that infrastructure quicker than NBN. And at that point, our NBN, like you can't get faster than the speed of light. Simple as that. It was expensive. I actually have my optic fiber ticket, so I can splice and I can join optic fiber. I used to be a splicer up on... So a... why haven't you fixed your property at home? Well, it's not here. And that's the thing. Up in Rockhampton, an electrician who was there, he applied and applied and applied and he couldn't get NBN to his house. So he actually become a contractor st- and you couldn't do anything unless you're a registered business. So he hit up three mates who were all just literally on the beers one day and said, let's, <laughs> uh, I want NBN. Let's do it. Let's let's run our own NBN. They actually applied for a contract and they'd done the job. And all of a sudden their neighbor's like, what are you doing there? He's like, oh, I'm running NBN to my house. Stuff it. And they're like, can you run it to me? He is one of the biggest NBN installers in Rockhampton now. <laughs> Over a couple of beers. I love it. Which started as four mates because Telstra couldn't keep up. Telstra would not even... They were flying contractors in from all over Australia, all over Brisbane. Like They were focusing on their main cities. And so Rockhampton, Gladstone, some of the newer developments in Gladstone were getting NBN. But, yeah, it was uh, very, very difficult back then. And that's what... Like, Stadia, I don't know. I, I still... Same as 4K TV, 8K TV, or 8K gaming, 60 frames per second, all that kind of stuff. We're 10 years too early. I don't yeah. believe we're, I don't believe we've got the infrastructure or the technology uh, oh. to to get that. Like I've got a 4K TV. I got a PS4 Pro. I believe it's only upscale. It's not true 4K, 60 frames yeah. per second. If PS5 is true, like apparently video is 8K. Gaming is true 4K, 60 frames per second, or even 120. I think they were saying they dip down. I'll be yeah. very, I'll be very happy with that. Yeah. But I mean, I've I've currently got a, a 4K TV, but I only play with a, I, I have a day one Xbox 360 and Xbox One. So if I want to play something in 4K, I'll play it on my PC. Like I I, I go to my Xbox mainly these days to play like the Halo Master Chief Collection until it comes to PC or to watch YouTube before I go yes. to bed. Yep. Very Cons- rarely do I use it my console to game anymore. Yeah. Co- well, consoles are something that you turn on, you play in 1080p, and and you turn it off. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it, it's never is a console going to win the race against the master race. It's as simple the as master that. Master race. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a while since like... I've heard someone call call the PC that master <laughs> race. I mean, it is, but like, it's been a while since I've heard someone actually I mean, call it. Back. All right. Well, I think we've heard my voice enough for tonight 
I've stared at Michael's ugly mug for plenty long enough. <laughs> I've watched um, Pierce's little display pick of an upside down dog. Oh, my dog. Uh, uh, which I accept that. That's fine. I'd prefer to stare at that than Michael. Um, <laughs> I'd get a far, I, I'd get a far better conversation out of it. <laughs> <laughs> a, a more articulated response. That's for certain. <laughs> What do you mean a more oh, articulated response? He's, he's now blown, I'm new. He's blowing out. Few. He's blowing out the mortar. <laughs> the bricks are falling out of the wall. <laughs> oh uh, my! Piers, seriously, thank you so much for joining us again. No problem. Um, I enjoy. I enjoy every time I'm on here. It's fantastic. All right, Piers. So just make sure when you get hurry up and get the PS4 version of No Man's Sky, so yes. we can actually play together finally. Get off the PC Master Race. Leave it alone. Thank you very much, man. Um, welcome one, once again. Uh, yeah, we'll have to catch up very shortly. Go over some more stuff and yep. just... Thank you for listening to this week's episode. Please remember to like and subscribe and just share the podcast around to all the gamers around the world. And remember, it'll never be game over. And gamers got a game. PC Master Race. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Piers. Thanks, Zappy. No problem. Thank <laughs> you.